Và sau đây, xin mời quý vị đến với phần chia sẻ của diễn giả Zen Nguyễn, co-founder and CEO of Kairos Ventures về chủ đề Việt Nam Blockchain Landscape. Trong phần chia sẻ này, hãy cùng lắng nghe những áp dụng blockchain và Web3 trong cộng đồng nhà phát triển công nghệ thông tin hàng đầu tại Việt Nam. Please welcome back to the stage, Mr. Zen Nguyễn. Um, chào mọi người. Um, lại là mình đây. Mình uh, sáng mình có 3 speech lần. Cái này cái thứ hai thôi. Um, về cái phần của anh Trung thì uh, nói chung là về pháp lý thì nó sẽ uh, cái đó là cái ưu tiên hàng đầu bởi vì là mình có nhớ một cái case gần đây là mọi người biết là FTX đúng không ạ? FTX năm ngoái là sập thì rất là nhiều nước bị ảnh hưởng. Thì mình có đọc một cái bài uh, thông cáo gì đó à, đại khái là sẽ refund cho một vài quốc gia. Uh, trong đó có Panama. Panama là cái office cũ của FTX có uh, Nhật Bản, Nhật Bản có một cái công ty của uh, FTX sở hữu đó là Coin, Liquid Exchange và cái cuối cùng là Turkey là Thổ Nhĩ Kỳ và không có Việt Nam. Có nghĩa là sao ạ? À? Nếu như mà FTX giờ refund tiền cho mọi người á thì Việt Nam là được refund cuối cùng. Tại vì mình không được bảo vệ. Cho nên là về phần legal thì nhiều khi nó sẽ hơi khô một tí nhưng mà mọi người sẽ nghĩ là ô cái này ràng buồn quá nhưng không phải cái đó là để bảo vệ cho mình. Thì đó là lý do mà GM Việt Nam muốn đưa cái bài speech của anh Trung lên đầu tiên. À, về cái bài speech của mình á, thì nó về cái hệ à, hệ sinh thái Việt Nam. Cái này thì mình muốn speech cho các bạn nước ngoài nghe. Tại vì à, chắc là mọi người ở Việt Nam mình cũng cũng quá hiểu là Việt Nam mình active và mạnh cỡ nào đúng không ạ? Và mình hy vọng là xuyên suốt cái GM Việt Nam này tất cả mọi người mỗi người à, mỗi anh em à, mình mình rất là mong tất cả mọi người sẽ gọi là trở một ambassador cho cái thị trường crypto Việt Nam tức là các bạn có thể nói chuyện với các bạn nước ngoài để à, mọi người cảm thấy rằng là Việt Nam là một thị rất là mạnh thông qua từng từng mỗi chúng ta ở đây thì à, bài speech này mình sẽ nói tiếng Anh à, nếu bạn à, anh em nào cần thì sẽ có cái tai phone phía trước mình mọi người có thể đeo vô và có translation live luôn nhé OK uh, I'll start my uh, Uh, presentation here about Vietnam. Okay. Um, so usually I talk about Vietnam. I uh, basically my career for six the last six year I keep selling Vietnam. That that's my job. Uh, and uh, in the today presentation, uh, I will also sell Vietnam as well. Um, I love it. I just love it. I think a few people here already hearing me selling Vietnam a lot. But today, I will sell about Vietnam in a different way. I will not only sell about Vietnam blockchain ecosystem, I will sell Vietnam as a country, as a nation, how strong we are. So the key word around Vietnam today, resilient. Resilient trong tiếng Việt là kiên cường, là bất khuất, là consistent, là khăng khăng, là làm đi làm lại, là làm đến khi nào làm được thì thôi. Và cái từ resilient này nó gắn bó với cái lịch sử của Việt Nam suốt 4.000 năm rồi. Why is Vietnam resilient? So, the first thing, I think many people still think Vietnam have war, right? I think like a few people, they ask their Vietnamese friend like, is there still war in your country? Because that's what, what people know about us. That's basically what people, like international media, they talk about Vietnam only about war. So that's why, like, it's understandable that they say that. But Vietnam, Vietnamese as a country, Vietnam as a country, we survived for the, like 4,000 years. We survived through all the war. We used to be invaded by the Northern Empire for 1,000 years, and we did not lose ourselves. We, we, did, we did not lose our language. We did not lose our culture. We did not lose who we are. And we tried so many times to warn them, and we did. And Vietnam, with the re resilient principle, we also won over the Mongol Empire uh, three times. Mongol Empire was like a nightmare for a, a lot of country back then, but Vietnam won three times, three times. And then in the last um, two centuries, nobody would think that Vietnam would won over French and um, America, right? Because we so like we so weak, like we are just a small country, very small, like. Uh, army resource, but with our, we, we, the only thing we bring to the, the battle is, uh, is all about the spirit. And we are res resilient, we are consistent with our strategy, that's why we won over them. So resilient is just a, a thing for Vietnam for 4,000 years already. 
let's take a look about the economy. So what about after the war? After the war, we, we, get, uh, we get in the um, independence uh, completely from 1975, and we spend another 15 years to figure out who we are and what should we do, right? We had the Doi Mới, we had the economy reform in um, 1986, and then we also struggle from, you know, we, we also suffer from the trade embargo as well. We had, we had to suffer a lot. We had so, so much, so much difficulty. Um, 15 years after the war, we were heavily destroyed by the war as well. We had to rebuild everything again. And Vietnam only, only really developed from 1990. And since then, 1990, the GDP is like five or six billion. Right now, we have 400 billion, 64 times growth in 30 years. And in just last decade, we grow two, two times. Yeah, so, so that's the past. I guess Vietnamese people are very proud about their history. Um, there's one interesting fact that many users in Vietnam, when they come to Twitter for the first time, they don't know how to name, the, uh, name their username. They would think about putting VN in their username. They always like that, always think about putting VN in the username. They're really proud of who, uh, where, where they come from. And then with that, right, how can Vietnam be, keep being resilient and grow to become the flagship of Web3 in the future? How can be the, we be the next big thing for Web3 for blockchain technology in the future? The first reason why I think so is that we have the human resource arbitrage. Look at this chart, right? We are, so this is the ranking, Asia, uh, Southeast Asia ranking capital, uh, human capital index. Vietnam is not the high income country. We are not even the upper, uh, upper middle income country. We are the lower middle income, lower than the Southeast Asia average. But look at the human capital index, this one. We rank the second just after Singapore, even though our income is so low. Hum, uh, uh, human uh, capital index um, represents the expected product, uh, productivity and the uh, professional potential of the human resource. So that's why many of my friends, they, they ask me, what should I do to get, in, uh, get into Vietnam market? I say, get your Vietnam team. Hire some Vietnamese people. Because that's the, that's the advantage we have. You can survive longer with the same capital if you are in Vietnam. I will show that later. That's why a lot of big boys like Intel or like Samsung or Apple, they recently they launched their factory in Vietnam as well. And another reason is that we have the political stability always. Um, and then look at the FDI train right now, foreign direct investment in South Asia. Look at Vietnam growing from nowhere, from 1970, we are the second this year in South Asia. We are the second because Singapore is so high. Singapore is so high. This, uh, this chart cannot accommodate them, but we are the second. Yeah, anyway, we are the top one here. Um, a lot of investment, like not only crypto, not only blockchain, we receive investment for a lot of aspects of the economy from the international VC and players. Okay, so this is the one example I, I took. Um, it's just an ex uh, assumption, okay? Um, suppose that we have a, a blockchain team with one founder, five dev, uh, two marketing, one BD, and one designer. Just a team like that to start lean, right? If we raised five million, and we can survive in Vietnam for 19 years, for 19 years. Of course, we, we, ha we have to grow. We have to expand the team up, of course. In that 19 years, we cannot stay in the same side of the team. But suppose that we keep the same side of the team for all the country here. You can survive in Vietnam. If you're based in Vietnam, you survive for 19 years. If you're based in US, you survive for three years. And expected that we just showed before, we have the really high capi um, uh, human capital index just, before, uh, just behind Singapore. Uh, so that's for the human resource. Um, uh, I think and Trung already shared a lot about the, um, the uh, legal framework process, uh, the improvement of Vietnam. Uh, I think so far, um, 
I, I won't read one by one uh, because I don't have a lot of time. I, I look at the count, countdown here. Um, so I think there's, uh, we, we still have a very open, in, uh, open environment for innovation in Vietnam, especially since um, 2019, March, all the uh, you know, um, technology startup in Vietnam will be tax-free for the first four years and will be 50% off for the next nine years. And Vietnam government are very, very open, encouraging us to use blockchain and the new, the new technology for integration in the you know, operation and stuff. So, so far, so far, even though we don't have a really clear legal framework in Vietnam, but we have the very open environment for development. That's why the number of builder, the dev community, the builder community in Vietnam is growing so fast. Uh, this is our goal to grow our tech talent. Right now, we have about half a million, and we set the goal to, be, to reach uh, 1.5 million in seven years. Okay, and the final part, why Vietnam can be the next big thing of crypto. The final reason, also the biggest reason as well. I think many people know this already, right? Um, so actually, I, I joined crypto for so long. I, I, I'm local, so I know how aggressive Vietnamese people are. But for international friends, they don't know that. But all these uh, research are made by non-Vietnamese company, Chainalysis, Fighter, or Metamask. Metamask is basically you know, the most popular Web3 wallet already. And they set up Vietnam in the top three daily active users. And then Vietnam also ranked the top one in terms of the crypto adoption for two years in a row from 2021-2022. And Vietnam always ranked top in the traffic of different uh, uh, projects here. Look at Binance and OKEx, the last three months. Just like from March to May uh, this year, we ranked second on Binance in terms of traffic and uh, top four on OKEx. Uh, we also rank top on the DeFi protocol like Sushi, Stargate, the X Screener. The X Screener basically a, uh, uh, a, a a tool for you know like trader um, on DeFi. And for blockchain, we are the top one on Sway, top two on Arbitrum, and top three on CK Sing. I think so. You know the reason. Yeah, um, this is the Vietnam blockchain map built by our team. Uh, it's, it doesn't cover all of the startup. It's just, uh, I think it's just like um, representative. Um, I think the real map is like three times bigger than, than this. But um, overall, uh, this is the, you know, the main player in Vietnam. I hope you guys will take photo of this. I, I do this for you guys to take photo. Make me viral. <laughs> Inspiring story. I, one again, I want to shout out to my brother, uh, Coin98. Um, the story uh, here is that I, I, I used to share office with Coin98 in 2017. We share a two-bedroom apartment. And he has four or five people. I have four or five people in the team. And I still remember those days. Like, like it was so hard for us. We, we didn't know, you know like, whether we should continue or give up. Because we were doubt trained. There was no DeFi. There was no game fight in 2018-19. We, we had to stay resilient and consistent with our goal. Lucky we're still here today organizing this. So GM Vietnam is our dream. Um, Coin IDA started very small, um, a community. Uh, Anthan started from his own apartment, running a YouTube channel first, and growing a community member uh, community from there. Coin IDA has always been, if they're, not, if they're not a product company, they're still the most influ influential community in Vietnam. Uh, that they did a great job in growing community. And the inspiring story here is that everything starts very small. Start from a community member, and you can be a, a, a unicorn one day. And then Axie Infinity, um, this, once again, I want to emphasize the human resource arbitrage advantage of Vietnam. Axie Infinity, right now, they are a billion dollar um, uh, empire. But the first round they raised is 1.5 million. And the reason why, like they have a very a lean team. They also start in a very small apartment like us. Um, and like being in Vietnam, like with just 1.5 billion uh, million dollar, they can stay like they can stay resilient in the market. They can try different app hypothesis. They can test different product model until they hit market uh, product market fit in 2021 and go viral. 
and go big from there. So being in Vietnam, I, I, I visited um, Sky Mavis' um, office the other day. I, I talked to Chi Ho, the, one of the co-founders. He said that being in an emerging market like Vietnam, based in here, is a huge advantage for, for many uh, startup builders. Hope that um, um, down here, uh, many of you are startup builders. So you know you are in the best uh, condition right now in Vietnam. And yeah, the last slide, um, I just want to talk that um, for projects that want to come to Vietnam market, I just want you guys to be resilient as well. Nothing happened overnight. Um, none of the brand can gain the exposure, the big exposure in Vietnam after a few weeks of doing a marketing campaign. Invest in Vietnam, invest in the human resource in Vietnam. I still remember of Binance. Back five or six years ago, we were the team that do the localization for Binance in Vietnam. And we know how careful they are in localization. They did like one, one text, they did proofread like five times. And they are really careful, they're in the downtrend of the market. They invest in the people in Vietnam. Right now, I think Binance is the first team, the first exchange had a Vietnamese team. Because before that, Vietnam had Bitrex and Poloniex. They did not have a team in Vietnam. And Binance was the first team, uh, first exchange that had the um, uh, Vietnamese team, Vietnamese growth and CS team, very close to the user. And then um, I think uh, be, uh, talk to Trung uh, for, for project coming to Vietnam, talk to Trung for about the legal thing as well. I hope that you guys will be really, really resilient with growing in Vietnam. Um, I'm happy to talk to um, you guys, uh, see you around, and I'm happy to share more about Vietnam. I only have 20 minutes here, so hope that all the slides here, all the information here are useful for, for you guys. Thank you a lot.